Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. Check it, check it, check it. It's your Nicole, it's your boy ECO, and I'm with the lovely, amazing, official... Miss Jamaica. Miss Jamaica. <laughs> well gone, you know my dad. I want to tell y'all, like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I'm talking about TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube, Instagram, Patreon as well. If y'all never heard about Patreon, that's where we have our all our full length interviews. And also on our YouTube membership. Y'all want to see those? Those drop before the, even, even before the clips. So y'all need to check that out. Subscribe, follow, do all of that. Thank you. Wow, man. Hey, man, this is another day, man. Another day, another dollar, man. Another way, man. This is a day that the Lord has made. I rejoice and be glad, glad in it. Him. Hey, man, listen, man. We got a guy here today, y'all. He's been on the show before now, man. This is the second time, man. He don't need no introduction, man. This guy right here, you can't miss him. Hawk the comedians in the building. Hey, yo, what's going on, family, man? Thank y'all for having me back, bro. Man, you've been busy, man. I, I know you've been busy because you were a comedian, so I know y'all be moving a lot. <laughs> hey, everywhere, everywhere, man. We just started the shows back up in Vegas and uh, moved to a new location, Planet Hollywood. And, of course, you know, okay. we got everything going on, you know, with the shows during the week, um, mm -hmm. and weekends and stuff like that. So it's just nonstop, man. We, you know, we grinding hard 2023. Wow, mm -hmm. man, it's just a delight, man, to have you back in Texas, man. This is your second time this year in Texas. Second time. But y'all out now, y'all interviewing at, uh, I mean interviewing, y'all doing the show at uh, the Improv at, in Arlington. At the Improv in uh, Addison. At in Addison. In Addison, yeah, okay. Y'all was time. Arlington last yeah, time. Yeah, in Arlington last time, okay. in Addison this time. So, so man, like how, like, like, how is it, man, like when you, is it any other city that you guys come to twice a year? Um, To be honest with you, this kind of like the first time I done came back twice, like as fact we was kind of like just here, you know what I'm right. saying? Maybe like what? What it was that like was a like month and a half, two, yeah. you know, about two months two ago, months, about two, two months, months ago. Mm -hmm. And we coming right back again here in uh, September, September eighth and ninth at the uh, um, Houston, Houston Improv. Houston, yep. right? I think Texas is big. You you yeah. got to hit all cylinders. Yeah. Do you guys ever go down to San Antonio, Austin, any of those other places um, in Texas? Uh, not this year. It ain't on the schedule this year. Yeah, okay. Just those, just Arlington, Addison, and uh, Houston this year. Mm. Yeah. Arlington, Addison, Houston, man, look out, man. These guys. This is my boy Hook, the comedian with Eddie Griffin, man. This show is crazy, man. And they're I, hilarious. Oh, they have me laughing every time I see them, man. This guy right here, hey, man. I always telling me remind me of Mike Bless though because Mike came out on me in Houston like he do so yeah it's the same thing they just up there getting to it man, two big everywhere, guys everywhere man it's like hey yo you know Mike Bliss yeah I be like yeah man that's my big brother man. so now <laughs> that's who Mike Bliss is man he my big brother man we actually connected man just off that's of the hard. internet and everybody else saying we look alike man I find this road and I was like bro you know everybody always be saying I look like you and he was like man I, you know I be hearing that and you know we exchange numbers man so we cooking up some stuff together, you know, hopefully soon, man. So y'all be on the lookout for that. Man, that's going to be, be hilarious because mm -hmm. both of them funny as hell, and that's crazy. And they, <laughs> and they cut, man. <laughs> man, so you're looking good, man. So how do you keep yourself up when you be on the road and all those, like, the snacks and stuff are around? And how do you, how do you stay focused? How you focused? eat healthy? Man, let me tell you, so... I go to Walmart, make sure I get my protein shakes and stuff like that. So I drink four, um, four protein shakes a day, and I just try four? to find, yeah four of them a day because you know. Okay, but hold on with the protein shake because I know some people who tell me that protein shakes make them constipated. Mm. Is that true? It depends which ones you get. You know, you have all the different brands and stuff like that, but it just depends on you know which one you get. You you you're actually supposed to get your body weight in like protein. You know, a day. Most people only drink like one or two. Right. But if you're trying to, you know, build muscle and you in the gym all the time, then you gonna have to drink. You know, a lot. But of if protein. you just want to eat, also eat a lot of protein. But if you don't right. want to build muscle, like for me, I just want to tone and you know cut up a little bit. Right. So when it comes to that toning and stuff like that, you already know. I mean, it's all in the carbs and the sugars and stuff like that. That's the biggest thing. You know, getting that water intake, flushing your body out constantly, mm -hmm. getting all that bad stuff out your system. And you know, just I mean, you ain't necessarily gotta go to the gym all the time. You can go on like little daily walks. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that does help, but you gotta you gotta really walk, not just take right. your time. You know, you gotta be out there going in. You know, mm -hmm. like you got some place to be. You know, right. and just keep it going. Yeah. Okay. So, but you said you work on a previous interview. You said you were scrawny. You were little when you were yep. growing up. So, when did you really feel like okay? I know you said the military is when you started. Right. But I know off air you told me you you actually took it to another level and really started doing bodybuilding. Right. When did you start doing this bodybuilding thing? Um, I started doing the bodybuilding. It was just like people started, for one, when people started calling me the Hulk. Because mm -hmm. like when I started, I was 142 pounds when I first started. Mm -hmm. And then once I got up to 200, that 200 looked real good on me. So I was like, let me see how far I can go. And then my strength and everything kept going up, kept getting stronger. And I was like, you know what? Let me hop on stage. Let me, you know, let how me get this bodybuilding. 
So my the biggest I ever got was up to two eighty five. Ooh, I was up two eighty five, and it's all muscle. It was all muscle. It was crazy. So you I'm really looked like the Hulk uh, at that point. I, I can I can post a video and put a picture. Of you be like, hey, that is not the same dude. You wow. know that guy? Hold on. You know that guy? He be on Instagram. I don't know his name. You you with the dreads? Guess, no, he be walking around That's looking like this, and he be bumping people. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What's yeah, that yeah. guy? I can't he, think of his name, but I know who you talking yeah, about. Yeah, because he huge. Were right. you that big like right. him? Yeah, it was big like him. Yeah, it was pretty wow. big. Wow. Like yeah, and big and like what him. was the purpose of doing it? Was it a, something you had to act in or you just wanted to see how big you could Now, to be honest with you, I got tired of seeing all the big guys walking around. And I was like, I was kind of getting jealous. I was like, <laughs> damn, man, them dudes walking around with all the muscle and stuff like that. So I was like, let me get some too. And I was like, you know, my wife was like, okay, yeah, you getting big. She grabbed my arms and stuff. So that, you know, motivated she me even more. It. You know what I'm saying? She started to love it. So I was like, you know, let me keep going. But it developed into not only um, like a passion, like, but it just, it was, it started getting like therapeutic and stuff mm -hmm. like that to where like whenever I would have it's like an issues addiction. and stuff like that, I'd be addicted. I'd be in the gym two, three hours just lifting, working out. But I mean, it, it turned into some good, which turned into me, you know, doing the bodyguard stuff. It turned into me, you know, building a name for myself um, as, you know, in the comedian world as Hulk the Comedian. So. But can it be bad to be in a gym too much? Yeah, yeah, it can be. Yeah, you, you're you not supposed to work out two and three hours. I was just, I ain't had nothing to do. I, you know, I got retired at an early age. I ain't had nothing to do. I ain't got no kids. It's just me and my wife. So I just stayed in the gym all day and just did as much as I can do. But I was eating a lot also. You know what I'm saying? Like even now, like I have like the stretch marks on my arms mm -hmm. where like my arms are just stretching it, you know, it's so much. So, you know, I just What? I, you in that damn gym like that, man. And and, and I'm trying to figure out like, do, how do you, do? does it make you feel, is there a point where you have to be careful because you can hurt yourself if you do, yeah, do the injuries. wrong exercise? So, like, I'm already hurt, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm already hurt. I already got back injuries and stuff like that. So from I have to bodybuilding. No, from the military. Oh. So oh. I have to wear my belt all the time, no matter what it is I do, um, because I hurt my back real bad. So I have to compress my uh, vertebrae and my um, nerves and stuff together so I don't really feel the pain because I have pain that shoot down my right leg a lot. Um, so I just... I just take my time. So that's how you retired. You retired from the military. Yep, medic retired the military. I got hurt doing the jump. Getting paid for the rest of your life. Yep. <laughs> what were you, you doing? Jump out of what? Out of the helicopter. Helicopter. I ain't jump out far enough. Mm. And, and I hit came, you? No, and I came back and hit the side of the helicopter. Ooh. Yep. Did, hurt my what, back. Hurt your back. Yeah, hurt my back real bad. Yep. Did yep. they have to do surgery? Uh, they wanted to do surgery, but I heard so many bad stories about surgery. So I said, you know what? Just give me some medicine and um, I'm gonna just thug it out because I ain't about to let y'all cut my back open. Then plus mm, I hear a lot of people. You can't walk for the rest of your life. You know what I'm saying? And then they go and cut your back open. They hit a nerve. Now instead of me just having leg problems and back problems, now I, I can't use my legs at all. You know, so mm -hmm. I rather just deal with the pain and you know just thug it out. You know, and surgery. So, I was gonna say it's so crazy that I was watching Upside, the movie with Kevin Hart, mm -hmm. and that's the one where that um, the guy he was taking care of he flew out, he jumped out of uh, um, no he was what you call it parasailing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And landed bad, and that's how he lost the the movement from his neck down. A he lot of them guys land bad. A lot of them guys land bad. A lot of people don't realize, like when you see them jumping out of the plane, like mm -hmm. there's no court. Like, you know, when you see people um, parachute cord. and they pull the cord down and slow uh -huh. them down, and they ain't got nothing there in the military. You just fall and you see the ground and they say brace. You know what I'm saying? You got to brace yourself and you just boom and you fall on your side. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So Tuck and roll. A lot of them guys, like they be, they be getting injured doing that stuff. And since we're talking about it a little further, um, when, you, when you came out and you hit your back, now you are you out there? You gotta land, and you gotta you got. So so I was um in air assault. So I wasn't um in airborne school at the time. I was in air assault. So okay. air assault is when you jump out the helicopter. You know, like the SWAT when they jump out mm -hmm. of the helicopter and they got the rope and they extend their way down. Yeah. So we're about about 200, 250 feet in the air. So I jump out. So I didn't extend my arm out far enough. So you know when you extend your arm, they give you slack. So. When I, if I would have stayed in my arm out, I would have dropped down further, but I didn't. I just put my arm out just a little bit, and I came back in and hit the side of the helicopter. And I started falling because I'm screaming. Like, I ain't paying attention because my back is, like, going in right now. So they have three people on the ground. They pull down on the rope, and that stops you. That puts the tension on that little clamp, and it stops I you. I bet that hurt, it hurt oh, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a nice little jerk. Mm -hmm. but, and then the um, helicopter started to come down and got me on the ground, and, you know, we just went from there. Wow, that's yeah. crazy, you know. And and to go back to the surgery a little bit, you know, um, I've been to surgery a couple of times, but surgery is not something to play with. Mm -hmm. You know, when I nope. think about you, a comedian, DC Young Fly, a comedian, yep. um, and his he just lost his baby Life. mom. I think it's his baby mother. I don't mm -hmm. know if they was married or not, but 
um, she had had surgery, the the baby mama makeover or something. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, um, surgery is not something to play with. Like, yeah, man. like I think a lot of time the way today's times is in society is. They've made it okay to say it's not. It's not life threatening. It's not. Anytime you go anytime up under the needle knife, and you mm -hmm. go under that knife and you go into unconscious and they mm -hmm. working on you, anything could happen, man. How detrimental is it that we have self love and motivate each other to say yeah. we, everything's okay? Yeah, man. That's that's you know prayers out of my dog DC on fly first off, man. Yeah, and, man. That's tough. That's, I couldn't even imagine, man. That like. I tell people all the time, like, you know, going up under that knife, you never know how your body going to react because you, I mean, you sleep, you know what I'm saying? So you don't know what type of stress your body is on. And then plus, when you go into surgery, I don't care what type of man, what type of woman you is, you stressed out before you going in. And then, you know, they got, you know, you thinking all kind of stuff going through your head. And then when they finally put you under, as they cutting on you, it ain't, you can't say nothing. You can't be like, oh, well, I'm stressed now, I'm doing this, then the third. And then your body got to take over and do the work for you. And they got, you know, things just happen, man. It's, just it's not even just that because I know some women who um, are addicted to surgery mm -hmm. because they want that perfect body. Right. Um, I know women personally who say, I won't work out. If I get too right. fat here, I'll just go to right. the doctor and get, they'll cut it off. Right. And I'm like, just like some people are addicted to the gym, some people are addicted to the table. And in my mind, I'm like, those women like that, they don't get nervous going to right. do surgery because it's like a walk in the park for them. Although right. anything can go wrong because it's a human being that's doing the surgery on you. And it, right. it could also be that person could have been in an argument right before they came in here right. and mine isn't there. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It's. I just think, I just, to be honest with you, I just think like, you know, I'm trying to figure, figure out you know, you know the right way to put this. Mm -hmm. I just think that society has deemed just the world and just on how you're supposed to look, how you're supposed to act if you're a certain person. You know what I'm saying? But regardless of the simple fact is like, like you said, when we go under that knife, it's like, you never know. I mean, you never know regardless of what you're doing it for. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, if I had to get rid of something or if, you know, I felt uncomfortable about something, you know, I would go under the knife if I, you know, felt like I needed to, but at the end of the day, I know that there's a possibility that mm -hmm. I might not come out of that, regardless of how simple chance. it is or how major it is. So, you know, I just, I just couldn't even imagine that situation, man. That it's I, heartbreaking. Yeah, it's really yeah, heartbreaking. I, and he's such a good dude, man. He worked hard. Beautiful wife, beautiful kids, man. It, it, that really broke me down, and it actually made me think. And I hope that it made a lot of people think, man, you know, about their relationships and just stuff. And they had, like, to me, they had the perfect relationship. I ain't never heard nothing bad. Mm -hmm. DC, I ain't never heard nothing bad about DC, her. Like, they always had smiles on their faces and stuff like that. So when that happened, I, you know, I called my wife and I was just like, hey, look, whatever it is we go through or whatever it is we got going on, man, it don't even matter. It just, it just don't even matter. And I don't know what put me in that state of mind, but I, it just had me thinking for a long time. And that really messed my day up. You know what I'm saying? It really messed my day up, man. Just big prayers out of my daughter. It made DC, a lot man. of husbands and wife or um, people in relationships have that conversation. Like, right. you know, you're perfect however you are. You right. know, I'm not going to risk losing you. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I know, granted, you could walk out of the house and God decided to take you that day. Mm -hmm. You know, but at the same time, if there's any way that you can so-called prolong it, then, right. you know, let, let's stay together. Right, right. Most definitely, most definitely. That's why I tell my wife all the time, if we arguing or whatever the case is, you better not leave out that door without telling me you love me. Or I ain't gonna, you know, I ain't walking exactly. out that door without Tomorrow's telling me because you can go get in your car and go to a light and pull out and here come a semi or something like that, and that was it. And mm -hmm. I don't never want to be one of them people that be like, I wish, or I wish I would have said this, I wish I would have said that. So I just try to go about things exactly. the right way, man. It's just, just that's all you man. can do, mm -hmm. man. I, I like I said last time you was on here, you talked about uh, security for I believe it was. Chicago, I yep, think you said, bag. and yeah, when you bag, did yo. that, it was some comments that, that came crazy. about yeah, they that they crazy, was man. upset about the fact of how you handled the situation. Right. What's up with that? Like, like, why do people choose to feel a certain way when you know and I know that your profession is that, mm -hmm. and you've studied on how to deal with that? Right. How how could somebody have the nerve of some people? You know. Right. Well, I think it just got a lot to do with because people. A lot of the men, and it was a lot. Of, a lot of the men. It wasn't really the women. A lot of the women was like, "Yeah, you, yeah, you made the right decision You're or whatever." Smart, you know what I'm right. saying? You were smart, but I think that it was like the men' ego. Like, "Oh, I never let a man do this, or I never let anybody do this." That and third, okay. Well, when you end up in the box, then 
That's it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not about to, you know, in no box. I'm going to make sure that I'm, a, you know, going back home to my wife. And, I, and you know, if I feel like something is putting me in danger, if I feel like I'm uncomfortable doing certain things, regardless of how big I am, regardless of how tough I think, I'm, you know, I might be, I ain't stopping no bullet. And for those who um, didn't see the first interview, um, you were talking about the fact that when Money Baggio was on stage and you saw some people walking towards the stage and the way in which they were walking towards oh, the stage. They weren't walking, they was coming. They, they was, was coming. Yeah, they was coming. Y'all said, you know what, let's go, we getting out of here we and put him slide. in the car and left. Yeah, we and left. a lot of people in the comments were like, you know, that's what you signed up for, you're a coward or you're, you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Because you don't know if they might, have, they might have been coming to shake your hand mm -hmm. or they might have been coming for, you know, what other like, reason. They weren't coming to shake, you know, and, and, and you know, and I seen, you know, a lot of people, you know, talking about, you know, him being in the gang and gang and stuff like that. Yeah, we all know that. about Chicago, whatever the case mm -hmm. is. But, you know, I'm just there to do my job. My right. job is to make sure that he gets out of there safe Safety. and he's not hurt. And that's exactly what happened. He got out of there safe and he wasn't hurt and I wasn't hurt and nobody else was hurt that night. But I just think a lot of people, they, 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 they want to see something. They want to see violence. They want to hear about they favorite rap or the security getting shot or a big brawl in the club. And I mean, it's 2023. I don't want to be famous on Facebook for 24 hours because that's all you're going to get. And when y'all did that, because um, you had to turn around and tell him exactly because he wasn't seeing all of that that's going on. Y'all mm -hmm. were the ones who were the eyes mm -hmm. and the ears of what was going on. And when y'all made that decision, um, y'all eventually had to tell him the reason why. Well, he was cool with, with, with that as yeah, well. Yeah, he didn't. I mean, like I said, even, you know, if y'all go back and watch the first interview, I clearly said he did nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. He didn't say anything wrong. He didn't. It just, it just. No, happened. I know, but I'm talking and to y'all. You know, because if I'm on stage, only thing we said was, "Hey, man, we got to go." Right. There was nothing else said after that, and we let, and you know. So we he went. didn't ask you. He so why did we have to go? Ask, none of that none. stuff. Nope. In the nope. middle of the. Nope. Okay. Because and that's a good person to me because if you gonna um, you know put your life and trust into our hands, and when we say it's time to go. Hey, no questions was asked. Was that in the middle of the whole concert or what did you finish? Club. We was at a club and we oh. was at a hole in the wall at that. Oh, okay. We was at a hole in the wall. That's what made it even worse. So, and everybody know about them hole in the walls. Okay. Oh, there's some pistols in there. Okay. There's some pistols in there. And yeah. I'm like, nah, we that's not about to happen. Yeah. I didn't know if it was like in the middle of his, <laughs> his performance and you took him off stage or anything like that. No, I mean, he was performing one of his songs. Right. And then, um, I mean, it just happened and it didn't get too crazy. But mm -hmm. before it get too crazy, let's ride. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It ain't gotcha. you know it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. Gotcha. And if you feel like it's worth it, then you gonna stay there by yourself. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I know you be on social media looking around and um, just like all of us see what's going on in mm. the media and stuff like that. And we saw what happened to um, Jamie Fox. Right. And um, what you think about? Because we haven't heard anything about Jamie Fox recently. You know, he's from Terrell, Texas, which is right, right down the right. street. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't wait. We, we've been praying very hard for him right. because we know something is going on because he's not coming out in the media. You know, letting everybody mm -hmm. know that he's okay and stuff like that. But we pray for a speedy recovery and most stuff death, like that. Um, but what do you think about the media? The way how the media? It, I remember at one point they tried to smoke him out and say all sorts of stuff about him to try to get him to come. Out. Like he was dead already. Yeah, I think I think the media need to shut their damn mouth, man, and let the man be in peace. Like you mm -hmm. know, like they putting stories and all the stuff out there, and then it starts to make everybody else gonna already put their own little two cents mm -hmm. into it. So now everybody, you know, you know, like they was thinking like, oh yeah, he about to die. He on his last, right. you know, his last leg. No man, I mean. We don't know what really is going on, but we do know that, you know, he's back home and he's with his daughter and, you know, with his family and stuff like that. When stuff like that is going on, like, regardless of who they is, just give them they peace. Like, don't put it too much out there because if you see that they're already stressed out and they're going through something, what you think that that might do to them mm -hmm. even more, you know, add Man. more stress on top of it. So I, I basically said the same thing. Man, it's crazy. You know, but he's doing it. The right way. He's keeping yeah, his mouth keeping. shut. His family keeping their mouth shut. And we know whenever he good and ready and he's back, you know, healthy. And keep loved ones yeah. aware of what's going yeah. on because that's the part I think about it because you know how we have loved ones, but we have extended loved ones in the family mm -hmm. that we don't really talk to all the time. Right. And when they see stuff on social media, oh, he's dead or he's dying, right. then it caused them to be panicked. Mm -hmm. And some of these panicked people are older people mm -hmm. that can't deal with a panic. Right. You know what I mean? So people don't realize how much harm you can create mm -hmm. by the, that false news and false mm -hmm. narrative. Yeah, I, yeah, I basically told them, you know, I went on my news you can use. Right. I have a state a, a deal that I just started and 
I went on and talked about Jamie, you know, what he would have thought, even if he if he was unconscious. During this time it was when it first started and I was like I went back and looked at some of the you know, some of the videos and interviews he done and just the way that he put God first. Right. And I posted that and told people, you know, like you know, you should be having hope and mm -hmm. faith instead of mm -hmm. fear instead because of fear, that's yeah. what that's what Jamie would do. Mm -hmm. Because yep. when he would speak and he would talk about different instances, he always brought up his grandmother mm -hmm. second, but he brought up God first. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you right now, I don't, I'm not going to forget that. I'm going to ride with that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ride with him to the end, even if he was a past. No matter, any of us can go. But I mm -hmm. want to make sure that I represent in the right way and knowing that he was a believer and a person who really mm -hmm. strongly felt good about yep. God no matter what he done. So many people try to figure this thing out from a physical standpoint, but it's a spiritual standpoint that we need to be tapping into. Mm -hmm. Right. And once right. you're still here, no matter what you're going through, you're here for a reason. God oh, left definitely. you here for a reason because I remember the trauma that you went through right. and it took a minute and they thought that you weren't going to pull through. Right. But look at you right now. You pulled through, yeah. you're speaking, you're great. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it just takes time and people need to stop cutting people off where, oh, they're done. Yeah. They yeah. don't know what miracles left to come, mm -hmm. and, and 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 like you said, you know, like you, you know, like you were saying, that does put stress on the family and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Because I'm pretty sure a lot of the family they want to come out and say, like, not mm -hmm. necessarily what's going on, but go off on the right. people who's actually doing it. So, like, hey, yo, give us this privacy. Give us like, like, let him heal. Let him let him get himself together. You know, when he's good and ready, he'll come out and let you know. But everybody, they they just want to know. Everybody got to know. Everybody mm -hmm. just got to know everything, man. So I just think people just need to sit back, relax. Mind your business and make sure that you straight and send them prayers up to Jamie Foxx, man, because like we just don't know what's going on, but we'll we'll know soon. We'll know soon when he good and ready. Wow. I, I'm, I'm going to jump off that subject for but man, we praying for Jamie Foxx, mm -hmm. speedy yeah. recovery. But as um, far as you, um, when it comes down to the way that you're approaching social media um, with the way things are, we've seen a somewhat of a uh, of a. I see the way that the algorithm is changing somewhat, mm -hmm. the right. way they do things, whether it be banning your own live or coming up with ways to make you uh, to where your page is not as noticeable. Ice T spoke strongly on social media when I interviewed him. He talked about how they only let people see a little bit of what you're doing, right. and it's just designated people to who they they are choosing pretty much. Oh yeah, oh yeah, basically because of the money that being spent. Yep. that's the driving force of social media. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do to? Uh, kind of uh, maneuver your brand in the second, well, the, the the third, the fourth, third and fourth quarter, and and coming into next year. Uh, I just kind of, to be honest with you, I just kind of pay attention to the algorithm, and when they be sending me like little notifications on stuff that I post, I just you know just try to stay away from it. But I try to create my own thing. I watch what everybody else is liking and posting and stuff like that, and I just kind of ride with that. So if you've been watching my social media lately, I've been everybody been gearing towards like mm -hmm. sex and stuff like that on social media and stuff like that so I just make stuff about me and my wife mm -hmm. and everybody's liking it they sharing it everywhere so whenever I jump off of that whenever they start a new wave I just go along with that but I was making so much money on Instagram at one point like I was like dang like you know maybe I, you know comedy internet mm -hmm. TikTok all this other stuff I'm about to bring in racks and then they then started they, paying. they just stopped like out of nowhere just that, stopped that, that, and that's what I'm kind of referring to as well because when you build up something and, and, and you think you have somewhat of an agreement with these people, mm -hmm. I think it's something when they just stop, like you just it said. It just stop. Like, I'm talking about one day, I made probably about $200. The next day, it was no more monetized, no nothing. It was gone. And, and how do you readjust when they do something like that? Be honest with you, I really want to get off of Instagram. <laughs> be honest with you. I wish that somebody would create, like, Another channel. Another channel, and it ain't gotta be just for black folks or whatever the case is, but I will say that they do target black people on there. I, you know, I don't like to try to make stuff about race, but I, but I watch it, I see it and I watch it all the time. The same stuff that we do, they won't post it, but if another race does it, it's all over, they blowing it up, and everybody's trying to get part of the trend and stuff like that, but it's like, dang, give us that same opportunity too on social media because Everybody's talent on there, regardless of what race you is. Everybody deserves the opportunity to make money on there. A lot of people are using social media to build their careers and stuff like that up. I'm a young comedian. I need the internet. You know what I'm saying? It's not like back in the old days where you had to go around everywhere. The newer generation, internet. we're social media, we're internet. Mm -hmm. And you know, some people like it. You know, like it. Some people don't. But it's just the way it is. Like, 
you know, whenever the social media stuff stop and I get older, it might be something new. And then I'm gonna just be the social media guy. You know what I'm saying? So I don't I just wish that they would just stop and just give everybody the equal opportunity. Just like with TikTok. Everybody was on TikTok. TikTok had took over Instagram for right. a while and then they was trying to ban it. For what? Wow. But what? TikTok's still paying though. So not like how they was though. Oh, okay. They still paying, but not like how they was. You see, they could decrease it now, especially since there's no competition. Mm -hmm. At least they're paying compared to other platforms who's not paying anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. But since Instagram stopped paying, did it make you feel like like why am I even posting right now? Like it don't make you feel like you just like well don't post as much as you used to. Well, no, I even though I kind of just want to stop with Instagram, but I get a lot of messages from people who be like, yo. I needed that this morning. I needed that laugh. Thank you for that laugh. I was going through a lot. So that's why I keep posting okay. on Instagram, you know, to keep people watching and keep them, mm -hmm. you know, staying on point to what I got going on. Because when, whenever people do see my post and they see my name, they're like, oh, my God, what is what is what is he doing next? You know what I'm saying? So it makes people want to watch. It makes people day and stuff like that because it. it's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of people going through stuff. And even sometimes. I go on other people's page and watch stuff that they post, um, like my man Ha Ha Davis and mm -hmm. all them, and I'll be having a bad day, and I go watch one of their videos and be cracking up, you know, it'll brighten <laughs> my day, so it ain't just about me, you know, that social media stuff, Got it really it. helps people. I love it. Well, I just, um, I started this podcast, right, like a couple of years now, I've been at it, and I interview a lot of people. I've interviewed people yourself, Mike Bliss, country, no, well, not country Wayne, but uh, um, all of them from, like I like I say, I've done a lot. Faison, I could keep naming Alex people. Alex the Comedian. A lot of people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I look at the internet and I'll be like, man, it's crazy how we ask questions and how we get answers and how we communicate with the people that we interview. I seen uh, Tyrese and um, Vlad, Vlad going back and forth mm -hmm. at each other because Vlad had offered him ten thousand dollars to come on his show, but when he didn't, his retaliation was to talk about him in a down sparrow to Boosie, and to try to get Boosie somewhat to interject into this conversation. Mm -hmm. But Boosie uh, uh, must have great A and R, even though he be acting a damn fool, because right. he did. He not, knows what to say from what not to say. Yeah, Boosie, Boosie knows. So, he knows he's been so, doing this too long. He knows. Hey, Boosie know what the people want, man. Boosie, Boosie, that's what they. Boosie know what the people want, man. Boosie ain't got to go into all that crazy stuff. He ain't trying to. Um, matter of fact, I watched one um, an interview with Boosie when he was talking about um, the him and the Ti situation. And I had watched him talk about that, and I said, "Man, Boosie is growing, growing, man. He is growing, like you know, as a as a man. You know, he's talking about his son and how they kids are friends and stuff like that. He was like, man, we can't break that up, man. Man, you know what I'm saying? This is stupid. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he admitted I was wrong. You know what I'm saying? So all that stuff, man. Like for you to offer somebody ten thousand dollars, and then if you're gonna talk bad about him or try to get some started, I mean." That's the internet. That's just that's just what they want. Well, he said he didn't know nothing about it. You know, like I, I don't know anything about. I, I I didn't hear about the Tyree situation, which mm -hmm. I seen a little bit on it. The fact that the you know media was going in on him, but the, then Tyrese come back and says that Vlad is a culture vulture and that he's pretty much taking you know basically black uh, blacks and exploit them, and that's how he come up to be uh, worth five million. And the thing is. I was like, but he's just doing interviews. He's been in the culture a long time too. Right. Even though he's not, he's not, he's not one of us. Right. He's followed the hip hop era for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. So it's a tough situation when you in in the box. I call this the box. Right. right. You're in the right. box and you're trying to figure out how not to be uh, critical and still trying to maintain. Like I interview, uh, I, we had a white lawyer that's coming this evening. Like. I don't discriminate when it comes down to who I interview, mm -hmm. but just the way that this whole interviewing process go, what is the goods and the bads that you see when it comes to podcasting and going on certain people platforms? Well, for one, I don't think that some people even know what a podcast is. I just get that. <laughs> Let me just get that out. I'm just and and that stemmed from a comment that me and you had talked yeah. about. Where somebody was like, "Well, y'all just talking." It's like, what? What? What else are we supposed to do? There ain't no pool tables around here. Like, well, I mean, what are we supposed to do? Shooting darts or something like that? I don't think that a lot of people understand that a podcast is a conversation. It's all it is. You know what I'm saying? And some people, um, 
they ask good questions and you know they get into you know the need of greed and stuff like that and some people they just they just want to talk about just nonsense like it ain't even like a podcast it's just just some bullshit like why did you bring me here yeah. you know you could have texted me you know this stuff right here you know what i'm saying yeah. but you know, that, that's them clout chases. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You suppose, uh, you know, when you go on a podcast, it's supposed to be fun and energetic. But people, when they, you know, when they watch it, they supposed to learn something about you. That's hard. They supposed to learn something that's about true. you. You know what I'm saying? To me, that's what a podcast is. So when you watch an interview, you know, with me or whatever the case is, like the first one, you know where I'm from. You know, I was in the military. You know, I was a bodyguard. You know, little you stuff, dealt you know, with a lot of different happened. entertainers. Yeah, you know, so it just so you you know a little bit about Hulk the comedian. It's just like some people they don't even ask you none of those questions. They don't care about where you're from. They don't care about this stuff. Hey, um, have you ever been in a fight? <laughs> have you have you ever did this? Do you like chicken? Like what? Like bro? Like what are you? What, like what are you doing? This <laughs> like this is. I think that was so funny because you were watching um, Cookout. Remember yeah, that part yeah, where yeah. Wendy Williams, she was the interviewer? And she kept throwing and she stuff kept, in there. She kept asking, um, um, do you, what you, what, what she said? Did like, your mom, kid, did your mom have issues with your dad? Yeah, was did, there did any you violence? Was there any, like she's looking for the, she, looking, she, she was doing that to, to make it, she was showing a point too. Yeah, yeah. She, she was just acting. Yeah, yeah she but, wanted that clout. She wanted those type of questions that there was some sort of mess. Right. Yeah. That's I mean, what it was. it's cool to throw a little bit of mess in there, it's fine, but you, like you also have to do your homework too and ha like be prepared and have your questions and stuff ready and stuff like that. You can just tell that some of these people don't be, they don't no be clue what they doing. I, they just go into it. I definitely, um, like I said, it's it's not a, it's easy for me because I talk about different things. I will bring in, because the thing is, to bring someone into this conversation, it A, have to be something that's a, a, a topic that's going on and everybody mm -hmm. is talking about it uh, and, and, and it can't be too close to something to where you might hurt somebody's family by right. what you say right that's not what right. the but the thing is how do we feel about it is a thing that i look at is if we tell how you feel about a certain situation it may help somebody else mm -hmm. on a positive level it mm -hmm. don't have to be negative right it can be something about something like vlad for instance bringing that up you know i'm not here to bash vlad i i basically have had people come on here that had didn't too much rock with him because right. of something he might have done but i will talk about certain things that he say or do because he talk about my stuff. Right. So it's basically an open playing field. You know right. what I'm saying? And I mean, that's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? When people create different platforms or whatever it is that you're doing, comedian, podcast, like playing football, I mean, whatever it is you do, you're going to have people that's going to be trying to go back and forth. It's just part of the game, whatever the case is. But it's just really how you go about it. Are you doing it because somebody did something to you or are you doing it just because you just trying to get some you know what I'm saying some, some mess start, mess start. You know what I'm saying and, yeah. and like with me I'm not going to follow the mess I'm not going to get into the mess or whatever the case is I might reply back but that's about all it's going to be that's I all it's going to be I ain't going to be trying to look for you to fight you I ain't going to tell you hey come on let me I ain't doing nothing because that's somebody tricking you out your position yeah you know? yeah you're trying to get me out of character yeah I, I think that's crazy so what do you what, like like do you ever, any of those people that you work with in the past for security or any of the thing, do any of those people ever reach back or did oh, you Oh yeah, my dog, my dog that was with me with uh, Money Bag, he texted me, man. He said he just seen oh, the he interview. Oh, he seen the interview? Yeah, he seen the interview, man, and he, and he was laughing, man. He was just laughing, man. You remember that yeah, night? Yeah, he probably remember that night. <laughs> That's my dude. He like, he but, didn't come back after that. <laughs> but, I, but, but I talked to a lot of people. I still talk to the same people um, because I was actually doing security in the clubs and some of my guys who I was doing security with in the clubs, I told them, I was like, hey man, I'm about to, uh, you know, get into the comedy game. And they said, bro, do it, do wow. it. I remember one of my dogs, one of my dogs is named Banner. Me and him was talking about it. I said, bro, I'm about to do this comedy thing. And he write me all the time. He'd be like, bro, you said you was gonna do it. And look at you, bro, you doing, I'm proud of you. Those are the people who I talk to Period. People who like tell me that they proud of me, that they just call that I can call for no reason. Just be like, bro, I'm just checking up on you. People that check up on me, my security dudes, man, they they still grinding. They still hit me up and be like, hey, man, you got any of those contacts, man? I'm trying to get on the road. You to you, I shoot them the contact, but I'm not going with you. I ain't. <laughs> <laughs> so and, and, okay, so when you was talking to those guys about getting into comedy, did you ever in one? Did you ever ever in your mind think that you'd be working uh, night and day? They in every event with Ed, with Eddie Griffin. Nope, nope. To be honest you with you, never thought about Eddie. I Griffin. never. To be honest with you, I personally thought that I would still probably be doing 
you know, a lot of stuff trying to build my name up right now. For me to be able to jump in and five months later and be on the road and be on tour is nothing but a blessing. But even when I was doing security and stuff like that, like this is me. It's not a it's not just something that I just said, hey, I'm gonna try it out. I said, hey, I'm gonna jump into it, but I've always been a comedian. I've always been a class clown. I've always been a person that go in the room and make everybody laugh or you know, not afraid to get in front of a bunch of people and just do something or say something silly. That's always been me. So it was kind of like, it was my calling, but I had to like, you know, get out there to it first. You know what I'm saying? It just wasn't, it just wasn't there yet because my mind was just focused on so much stuff. I was trying to do so many things. It was just like, in the back of my mind, it was like, no, you need to be doing this. This is you. You know what I'm saying? Regardless, you know, and the money will come. You know what I'm saying? It ain't even about the money. This is me. I'm having fun. You know what I'm saying? Like, this, throughout this whole process, I've learned so much. And every time I step on stage, I'm becoming better and better and better. I watch every show. I watch um, everybody's um, they reactions to certain stuff I say. I just, like, I study myself because I do want to be the best that I can be. I do have a lot of comedians that be hating and talking junk. But, hey, it'll be all right. I mean, I mean, hey, it's either you got it or you don't. It's either you got it or you don't. But a lot of comedians, they'll write me and say, hey, man, I, I, I want to be on tour. Okay, yeah, that's cool. You want to be on tour, but what are you doing to get on tour? A lot of people don't know when I first started, I was Ubering and doing all that stuff to try to make money to get on the road. And I'm out here, you know, taking little side jobs to make money to get on the road and stuff like that. You know, a lot of people don't know the, you know, the struggle you really got to go through. It's not just about being funny. You have to get a lot of stuff in place in order to be able to do this type of work. It's not just gonna come. And it's, you know, it's just such a blessing. And to be with Eddie, that's, man, that's, it still ain't hit me yet. It still ain't hit me yet. Let me ask you this. <laughs> okay, cause you said it still ain't hit you yet. And last show I, I seen Eddie and he was, he in his rare form and he said, you could sue me, whatever, I don't care. You could be mad. I, I, about me saying this or that, I'm I'm get, I'm gonna leave the game anyway. I'm getting ready to retire. Okay, fast forward, uh, you know, that's the way I took it. Mm -hmm. Eddie comes to you in this hypothetical and he say, I'm done. I'm not gonna mess with this no more. Mm -hmm. I'm out. What does a, what does a Hulk comedian do at that point? At that point, I would ask him, can you give me any guidance on how I can take this further, you know, with myself and uh, what other steps I need to take to be able to continue doing this right here, even though you stop and like, will you still be my mentor? Which I know that he'll still be my mentor, mm -hmm. but will you still, like, will you be able to give me any kind of connections, anybody I can link up with to where, you know, I can start doing certain things as well? Because I know that he has connections that I don't have, but I don't ask him, you know, for that stuff right there. You know, I just keep it humble. I do my job, as you know, as of right now, because I know it'll come. Um, I don't know how much time he got left to, you know, he's going to continue doing this. But right now, I mean, I'm just having fun with my dog, man, and just, and just, and just enjoying this experience. And if it was the end, if he was to tell me, hey, man, this is my last weekend, hey, man, look. I appreciate everything you've done for me. You my dog. If you ever need anything, I'm here for you, and I'm gonna make you proud. Wow. Yeah. What do you think about that? Mm, do you like that question? Because mm -hmm. I just feel like you know you have to be prepared for anything that mm -hmm. could go a different way. Because Eddie been doing this a long, long time. long time. I remember he told a story about when he first went to uh, California and he was trying to get uh, a gig, and he didn't have the right structure. He didn't have the people to structure it around him. To, so they said, can we call your manager or whatever? And he would go out and get on the phone and act as his manager. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and talk to him and fake like he was hey, the manager. He told me that. That way he said that. I do that now. <laughs> <laughs> I do that now when my wife not around, man. When my wife not around, I'll be like, hey, I actually have a business line. And I'll say, hey, you got to text my manager or whatever. <laughs> and it'd be me. <laughs> I'd be, be, be texting back and forth. But I mean, um, this is one of the things like, I know Eddie be watching me and he gives me a lot of words of encouragement. Like uh, we was in Atlanta uh, last weekend and I had just, just ripped the stage. And when I walked back there, he was like, hey man, you getting better and better and better. And I said, man, I'm all right. He said, look at you trying to stay humble. I try to keep it humble. I'm going to stay humble because I'm not going to allow my head to get big because I'm still wet behind the ears in this game. Even though I am with Eddie Griffin and you know, that's that's something very major, something big, and you know it's definitely a blessing. I'm keeping it humble because at the end of the day, like you said, this can end at any moment. He can just, hey man, I've been doing this forty plus years, man. This is it. I don't, you know, I yeah. made enough money. I got my kids I, and stuff like that. I can see you being in film. 
I would love to be in fans. I see, you know who um, I put in mind when I see you because the way how you love to joke around and stuff, but you're big. Mm -hmm. What's the guy's name um, in Friday? Terry Crews. Not Terry Crews. I'm thinking about the other one. Not Friday. Oh, my God. He's a big guy, and he always make his chest jump. Um, Terry Crews do that all the time. He times. do that, but that's not him. Terry like, Crews, I'm looking for that dance battle, by the way. I'm going to just shoot that out there. Oh. Somebody, somebody shoot that to Terry Crews. I don't know but who it's you not talking him. about. I'm seeing somebody else in my mind. It's not Terry um, Crews. Um, no, you talking it's about the, one the in, guy that played um, Damon. That's what you talking about? In Norbit. That's who it in is. Norbit. Hold on. I'm trying to tell you talking about. One of the brothers. In I'm North. thinking you think about talking about Terry Crews. You think so? Yeah, I think Terry you're talking Cruz. about Terry There's two of them. There's Terry Crews and there's this other one that be acting silly. But he's a big guy, but he's he bigger acts than Terry Crews? No, he's not bigger than him, but he's still muscular. Yeah, I don't, I'm going to tell think you. You're about but, but I think you're talking about. Not Pinky. Not Pinky. No. Nah. Pinky was not even. Pinky was on, on Norbit with, with Terry yeah, Crews. Yeah, yeah, but he wasn't yeah. big, though. Yeah, but still, you, you say he ain't bigger than not, Terry Crews. The other guy that was his muscular. brother was bigger yeah, than yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the guy, yeah, yeah I so know So I don't that. know who the heck you talking about. I'm going to tell y'all, but well, I don't, I don't, I don't nah, think I would, so. I would, but I, would I see you doing a family. part like that where, you know, because of how big you are, you know, you come across looking intimidating, but then you turn around and break out dancing because just mm. like how you're doing a lot of your skits on mm. Instagram you always be dancing and you know cracking up and stuff like that so I see you doing stuff like that in well, a movie I just, because it's it's the way you know how people look at people I know that people don't look at me as a comedian mm -hmm. but that's I love it I love it because it makes you wonder what is he about to do what is he going to say like I know every time I walk on stage and people look at me like what I know I ain't waste my money to come in here and watch this big dude come up here. And, and when I open my mouth, they be like, oh, okay, he really does got something mm -hmm. to say. You know what I'm saying? I would love to be in film. I would love to act because, I mean, I can I can play, you know, all kind of roles. I can do all kind of stuff. Um, and I do all that in my skits. Um, my skits. And I also do it, the other movie scenes and stuff, too. I've gotten back into doing, like, certain movie scenes and stuff, too. But I put a little twist to it. Like I did the, um, the Django Raid. Um, not mm. too long ago where they had the, the bags on but I took some Kroger bags and put them and put little holes in them or I do like Rush Hour or I you know just all the movie scenes I actually about to, um, I got some Terry Crews um, scenes from uh, white chicks that I'm about to do oh, yeah. I already got, <laughs> that I already got in the bag but I put out so much content it's just you know I'm gonna get to it but I would love to act I would love to act in you know comedy I don't necessarily want to play like a a serious like a role serious role because yeah. that's that's not me. Not I either. mean, but I guess because of how I look and tattoos and stuff like that, I would get that part. But could be a bodyguard. Yeah, yeah, I could be a bodyguard, <laughs> but a goofy. You know what the internet say? Uh, I can be um, I can be a coward bodyguard. I can run away <laughs> and <the> thing. <laughs> so take that around with it. <laughs> wow, I, I think I, I think you, you 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 whatever you decide to do because of the way that you built the foundation for your mm -hmm. your, your social media your your whole brand. I think um, it'll it'll do it'll do just fine. Mm -hmm. When I asked you that question about Eddie Griffin, it was basically because he could at some point go another way but he's he's got a litany of things that he's already accomplished for right. us, oh, yeah. Malcolm and Eddie and all the stuff that he done the thing is like for you to even link up with him you tr you truly right that was a blessing mm -hmm. um uh Eddie is is one of he's a freak of nature when mm -hmm. it come down to comedy right. uh he killed everything that he ever touched right. anything that he done he was in Norbit I just thought about that mm -hmm. you know like yeah. it's the guy I was thinking about that's Terry Crews. Oh, is that Terry? God, I knew that's what you were talking about. <laughs> Come on, saying? man. I knew that already. You know, when you say Terry Crews, I knew Terry you were talking about no, Terry no, no. Crews. I was because, saying, like, who else dancing in the movie? No, book? because when you're, thinking of, when you're saying Terry Crews, you know who I was thinking about? Debo. That's you. No. I wasn't thinking about <laughs> It's for some reason I was putting, when you're saying Terry Crews, I'm thinking about Debo. But that's you, why I was like. You want me to say uh, the thing with Eddie? When he always talking about how Richard Pryor raised him 17 years in the game and stuff like that, I always think to myself, that's how I want to be with him. Wow, that's how I want to be. I, that's how I want to be with him. Like every time I go on stage, I always go dap the whole team up, and I dap Eddie up, and mm -hmm. he'll be like, "Go kill him, Hope." And when he say that to me, I'll be like, "I gotta go make him proud. I gotta make my dog proud." So I put my all into it, and I have fun with it. But it's just like when we dap each other up, when he's coming on stage, he'll look at me, and it just make me feel like. Dang, bro, like, thank mm -hmm. you, man. Thank you for this opportunity, man. And a lot of people, they'll probably be, like, trying to, like, even in the videos y'all see when we do the promo videos, it's like, it's like 
like like a genuine friendship and a lot of people don't get that and he don't never tell me no he don't never turn me down he asked me am i good like it's just that's my dog man like for wow. real something you keep saying is humble i've been hearing a few people from trio talk no pill talk let me see because that's the first person i heard say it uh to wallow to this other guy i don't even know his name but he was on the show in atlanta he said it, and these guys are turning it around and saying that to say you are humble is weak, and, and, and basically, they don't want to be humble. They want to be uh, narcissists or whatever because of the way that definition mm -hmm, is. Mm -hmm. And I, I see where they are taking it there, but I also know that when you talk about different people like Eddie Griffith, like Warren Buffett, mm -hmm. like uh, 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 Elon Musk, or like Steve Madden when I met him and over the years and been around him, when guys have already arrived and they've they've done the things that they they've pretty much set their goals to mm -hmm. do and they still come across as genuine people right. and show you that humbleness, words can't explain the fact of mm -hmm. how it makes you as a person feel to see right. one that could be a whole different way in a position of I'm humble. What do you think when you hear people say that being humble, the thing that you, you just were saying, that that's not a good thing? You're gonna ruin your career, you're gonna ruin yourself. People gonna be with you for a little bit, and then as soon as it go left, they ain't gonna be with you. If you stay humble, people gonna stay with you. People gonna ride with you. You know what I'm saying? And they gonna they gonna encourage you to do better. They um, I I just think it's just people they they just want to look a certain way. They just want to want people to see them as a certain way as being hard or tough or like they don't cry. Like you human, just like everybody else. You human, just like everybody else, man. And if you remain humble, your blessings will come. Wow. I like I like the way you may humble your blessings will come. Yeah, and and I and, and I get it. I, I just was I've been struggling with that because I understand where they're coming from when they say it, but I do know that the definition and the expression is kind of different. Right. Oh man, that's crazy. The definition. Right. <laughs> the way you right. define it out of a book and the way that I feel about it when I see you. Right. It's two different things. Right. Right. You see what I'm saying? Because. When you seeing somebody act a certain way on social media, internet, or whatever the case is, nine times out of ten, they ain't like that in real life. So why would you even want to put that out there? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why would you want to like let people know who you are? Let people know that you, hey, look, I'm humble. I'm human just like you are. I had somebody um, write me yesterday, and um, it was a lady and her husband. And I, I was doing sound check at the club, and they had started letting people in. So I said, all right, let me get out of here. And they shot me a DM and said, oh, I just saw you. I was starstruck. And I saw, and I wrote back. I said, "Where are you and your husband at?" And I went over there and spoke. And they was just like, and they was just mm -hmm. like, "Oh man, you came over and spoke." I was like, "Look, man, I'm, I'm human just like you. I came here to have fun. And when you do stuff, you know, you do stuff like that, you know, with people. When you come back, whatever it is that you do, they gonna support you to, yeah. you know, to the max. Yeah. That's so true. But you know, the funny thing that, um, <laughs> you know, how like we do interviews, right? Right. And we have all different people who come in here. And when, when you meet people, because we're who we are, so I, we don't treat nobody differently. Right. So when you're coming and you're a human being, we just right. hey, what's up, what up, treat you like anybody else. Right. I remember one day, uh, cause we don't listen to the radio as much. So mm -hmm. I was driving on the road, listening to the radio, and I heard someone's music who've been on the show. And that's at the point when it dawned on me like, dang, these people are really like big. It's like it, it don't dawn on me personally mm -hmm. because when I meet you, it's just like you, I'm meeting my friend around here mm -hmm. because you're just like any anybody else I know. Yeah, you got you. I mean, you breathe same air I breathe. You gonna you gonna die just like I'ma die. You gonna you gonna be in the ground or cremated or whatever. How everybody else is. So hey, look, just be yourself and have fun. Like, but people put you on a pedestal when they don't know you or see you on TV or see you, you know, um, on the radio. Like man, you I see mean, what I mean? You know, I. You know, I see people like that where I put up on a pedestal, but at the end of the day, I know that they are still human. And when right. I get around them, I treat them like they human. Mm -hmm. Like I be respectful and I treat them as if I want to be treated, exactly. you, know, with, you know, with respect. And if you come off as an asshole or whatever the case is, that's fine. That's you. I don't have to speak to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to speak to you. I'm not going to look at you any different, but that's just how you are. If that's gonna, how you're going to be, then that's how you're going to be. I wanted... Did you see Tupac got the star on the walk of fame? They should have been. <laughs> That's what I tripped yeah. off of. I swear to yeah. damn man. I'm like, man, oh, they should have been, been gay that man that started. Mm -hmm. Man, he need two, three Bruh, more. That man died 20, years, 20 plus years ago. That They should have been gay that man that started. Mm -hmm. That blew my mind. I'm like, then I thought about when you were walking out there. I was like, damn. 
I didn't see Tupac but star did, here. But we didn't walk the whole strip and look at all yeah, the stars. Yeah, but they, I'm like you. They should have yeah, been in there, yeah, man. Be like honest, I said, when I seen it, I was proud, but I was like, I was kind of pissed off a little yeah. bit at the same time. I was like, what? Like, why are y'all just not doing this, you know? But, but, then, but then, like I asked him, because a lot of time when you think about Tupac, the first next name you think about is Biggie. I'm like, does Biggie, the Biggie have a star? Got a star. You see what I mean? Tupac should have been you had a star. If you give Tupac now. one, you know, you that's coming give next. A star. If he don't have one, he's coming they next. They need their own section. And the sad part about <laughs> right it beside is... Each I right seen, beside each other. I have seen... I seen Tupac's sister on there. Mm -hmm. I seen my boy Malik Yousef on there. Mm -hmm. I seen uh, a lot of people that I seen Tretch on there. I ain't seen these guys in a while, so I was mm -hmm. pretty excited about that. You know what right. I mean? To see, I, I, and I missed uh, uh, my boy because I know he would have been there from Digital Underground. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Shock G, he yep. passed away, yep. RIP. But you know, it was stuff like that, man. To get those memories, and then I've been posting a lot of people that been on the show and talked about them different people because, like, man, it's the best time to just drop it. His birthday coming up, mm -hmm. uh, the sixteenth, mm -hmm. and next it's Friday. like next Friday. It was kind of like Martin. When they mm -hmm. gave Martin his, yeah. oh, they yeah. been there, the man. It's time. Like, I was sitting there like, I just got like, his too. It's crazy. Ice T just got his. He just got his. I was, yeah. like, I don't All know the work the, that they've been putting I need, in. I need to know the process. Like, is there like what's going on with this process? And nobody knows because when I ask, nobody they don't know. know. Daffy Duck got one. Uh, Bugs Bunny got one. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I heard something, but I, you know, I don't go by what I hear. You know what people say, but I heard that you got feel like applications. I was like, I, I don't know too. if that's true or not. Whatever. I mean, but if that's if that is true, can I get an application? Because I would love. To, <laughs> I would love. To have Do Eddie stuff. got one? I don't think so. I don't think so. Eddie Griffin don't, don't have so. a star on the wall. That's crazy. Eddie don't have one? Y'all need to get my dog a star, man. <laughs> no, it's getting serious. No, but it's getting serious. But I can next ask week. him, as many actors and actresses and movie stars and everybody, singers, because they do singers, they do all these different genres yeah. on there. Um... They gonna run out of space. It's Ludacris got one. It's he week. just got it. It's 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 they people gonna who run got out of stars space. who who deserve their star. Everybody deserve their star. Mm -hmm. But it's people who got stars that I feel like should be getting their star now because it's people way who done put a whole before, lot of work yeah. in before them. You know, all of them deserve their star. You know what I'm saying? They in the acting and stuff like that. Wow. You know? Man, music and all that good stuff. I'm upset, but. like you, about that Pac star. I think he should have got Ben got it. You know some of the songs that How Long Will You Mourn Me, Me Against the World, all these different and the acting. Man, Tupac, Paul still, Justice. Tupac still doing concerts. <laughs> hologram, hologram. People paying to see the hologram. That man ain't got no star. He just not getting his star. Come on now, man. Man, come on, man. How can people get a hold of you if they trying to reach out to you, Hulk? Hey, man. If y'all want to get a hold of me, man, y'all can follow me on social media, uh, TikTok, Instagram, Hulk the Comedian, H U L K T H E Comedian. Uh, you can hit me up on my email, HulkTheComedian dot com. And uh, I mean, hey, that's where all my bookings and stuff come from, man. So I mean, I hope to hear from y'all. If y'all like my content, man, let me know. Um, if y'all want to see more content. Let me know. I'm going to keep it coming. I um, mean, y'all, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to stay humble and stay true to the craft, man. Man, this guy, man, they are, like I said, they at the uh, improv up in Allison, man. It, it, it's crazy, man. This this weekend, is it's sold out, It's though. sold out. It was sold everybody. out weeks ago. I tell everybody, look, when you go, go on eddiegriffin.com, look at the dates, look at the tickets. Get your tickets now. All shows will sell out. And I repeat, all shows will sell out. Weeks in advance, man. Weeks in advance. We got a crazy tour schedule this year, man. Man, coming crazy to a city near tour. you. Coming to a city, city near you. you, man. Thank you for coming on the show, oh, man. Always, man. I'm always slide through. I hope we, city. I hope we did you justice here, man. On Boss Talk 101, we're gonna, as long as God give us room to breathe and be in these. It, we've been here what 17 years going on now. Mm -hmm. So, hey, man. Listen, man. We, we gonna always invite you in. And we love oh, yeah, you, bro. Thank you so much, too, man. man. Say, man. We gonna always do that. We gonna get oh, out, yeah. man. Oh yeah. Check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss is talk. And we out.